Hi everyone! This week's case study reading was Stephen Katz's The Ethic of Expediency. In this piece, Katz analyzes a piece of technical writing from Nazi Germany. I want to start this recap by saying bravo to you all. Students often struggle with this piece because, as with many of the readings for this class, you're just not the target audience. Katz is writing to scholars in rhetoric and composition, and so he uses jargon and a writing style that members of that field are more accustomed to. However, you all did really well with this piece. There are a few nuances of the article that many people didn't quite get, so I'll discuss those here, but overall, most everyone demonstrated a good understanding of the basic gist of the piece. All right, with that being said, let's get into the questions. Question number one, what does Katz mean by the ethic of expediency? Let's actually start with what Katz means by expediency. To Katz, expediency basically means efficiency. So questions of expediency might be, how can we make this work process more efficient? How might we redesign this process so that it costs us less? So that it works better while requiring fewer resources? By ethic of expediency, Katz is essentially saying value of expediency. So when people or businesses value the process of making something better while requiring fewer resources, people or businesses have the value of expediency. Now that doesn't sound so bad, does it? Well, in some circumstances it might not be, but Katz's big point here is that there are often other values at work sort of underneath this ethic of expediency. And in the case of the Nazi memo that Katz describes, the process that the writer wants to make easier is the process of using gassing vans to mass murder Jewish people, LGBT people, disabled people, Romani people, and a whole host of other people deemed undesirable by the Nazi party. Katz's point is that seemingly neutral values like expediency might not actually be neutral because those ethics don't take into account the impact of those processes on human lives. Let's take a perhaps less obvious and much more recent example. If you or someone you hang around with is into games at all, you may have heard about some recent issues with the company Telltale Games. The company is going bankrupt and in order to try and finish creating the last installment or last couple installments possibly of the Walking Dead game, they've decided to outsource the last bit of the game because that costs them less to produce the game and they might be able to actually finish up the content even though they're going bankrupt. Seems efficient, right? Well, in the process of doing this outsourcing and going bankrupt, Telltale laid off hundreds of games designers very suddenly and without any sort of severance package. These folks are now suddenly without any income after their last paycheck and have to figure out how to pay their bills and feed their families and themselves. Telltale's expedient decision to finish completing the game by outsourcing it instead of paying severance to their workers either didn't take into account those workers' livelihoods and lives, or it did and it decided they valued the expediency more. All right, question two. What writing strategies does Katz identify in the memo that he includes in the article, and why are those strategies problematic? The main strategy the Nazi writer of the memo Katz analyzed was to completely dehumanize the subject matter. He used words like load and capacity and even merchandise to mean people. So when the writer says, the merchandise aboard displays during the operation a natural tendency to rush the rear doors and is mainly found lying there at the end of the operation. What he means is, the people try to escape through the back doors because that's typically where we find them lying dead once the process is over. As for why these strategies are problematic, hopefully it's pretty clear because the example is so extreme, but as I mentioned in the discussion of the previous question, the issue is that these strategies intentionally obscure the impact that the topic at hand will have on human lives. And they use the guise of clear language to do so. Again, this is an extreme example, but let's consider the Telltale Games case again. One tweet that Telltale composed after they announced they were going bankrupt was this. Multiple partners have stepped forward in expressing interest in seeing The Walking Dead to completion. They said nothing about the 250 developers that they laid off with no severance in order to potentially work with these new partners. All right, question three. 
can you think of an ethical quandary you might face when writing about science? And what strategies might you use to address the issue? How you answer this question, of course, depended on your own field and your own writing experiences. I was really impressed by your very thoughtful responses. Well done, everyone. That's all for now. I'll see you soon.